Hello everyone! A very good technique for making games look better is through post-processing, which is applying effects on top of your game. For 2D games this is very easy, as it all comes down to creating a rectangle on top of everything that samples the screen texture and then applies the effect. However, for 3D it's not that simple. If you try the same technique, it kind of works, but you can't see the live changes because the rectangle is in 2D while the scene is in 3D, so you can pretty much only hope that the effect looks good enough when you run the game. On top of that, because the effect you're applying is basically on a 2D object, you lose some of the cool features that are only available in 3D, like being able to use the depth buffer. So what can we do? Well, if you only need to be able to preview your effects, what you could do would be to take the whole 3D scene and put it under a sub viewport. Afterwards, you can use that sub viewport as a texture for a 2D sprite that has the actual effect. And the only difference in our shader will be that we are no longer going to be sampling from the screen texture because the effect is on the actual sprite, so we are going to sample the sprite texture. But even better than that, we could completely ditch 2D and create a simple quad to use as a quote-unquote filter for our scene. To create it, we are simply going to use a Mesh Instance 3D with a quad as its mesh and we are going to apply a material with the shader to it. Because the quad is 3D, the shader we apply to it is going to be a spatial shader and because we technically don't consider this quad as being an object in the game's world, but rather just a modifier on how we see that world, we are also going to make this unaffected by light or fog. After doing this, we can take the screen texture and change it however we want so that everything behind the quad has the effect applied. Now, while it's very cool that we can have this effect applied on a region in our 3D world, in our case we want to apply it over the whole screen. So to do that, we have to make the quad always be in front of the camera. We can easily do that by assigning the coordinate we want to the position built in, which overrides the final vertex positions of our quad in clip space. So if we want the quad to be in front of the camera, we'll just have to take the X and Y vertex coordinates as they are, but change the Z coordinates so that it's always got the value of 1.0. Okay, but now the quad vanished. But this is only because it's facing away from the camera. If we want to fix that, we simply have to check flip faces and now we will see the quad correctly. Another thing to note is that despite us seeing the quad on the whole screen, this change was only done in the vertex shader, so the original quad's position is still in the same place. Because of that, if we turn the camera away from it, the quad will get culled or removed for efficiency reasons. To avoid that, we can either set the quad to be a child of the camera, or we can increase its extra call margins so that it doesn't get cut. Alright, but we still have a final problem, which is that the effect does not cover the whole screen. And that's simply because the clip space ranges between minus 1 and 1, but our quad is only 1 meter horizontally and vertically. To cover the whole space we simply have to double its size, and now with that done we can do all kinds of effects we want, and even use the depth buffer or the world position in order to change how our game looks like. Alright, but that's pretty much it. So thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot to my supporters, and see you in the next one. Bye bye!